G'day, welcome back. Today in the channel, we're looking at skin tones in DaVinci Resolve and how to achieve better looking skin tones with a couple of different methods. Now, this image may look familiar to you and that is because I'm working on a couple of different looks and I'm just using this as my base grade because it's exposed nicely and it is a great image to work with the looks that I'm going for. Now, let's quickly talk about the grade here. So we just have exposure, balance, ratio, some saturation and HSV. We have our skin tone node, which we actually haven't done yet. Now, what's really going on is mostly under the hood here in this compound node. It has some film LUTs on it and has a couple of other things on it. I can't actually talk about them because they're not mine and I'm still experimenting with them at the moment. So I don't really want to show you something which isn't complete, but it is making my skin tones very magentry in this image. There is a couple of different ways we can tackle these skin tones and I'm going to show you the way that most people are shown and that is using the qualifier and then I'm going to show you a different way which I think is a superior way to grading our skin tones. Let's go to this node here in our skin tone node and we're going to qualify this image. Now to make it easier on ourselves with this qualifier, let's put a power window around this person's face here. So if you select your power window here and it doesn't show up, simply come across to here and then go down to power window. And that's gonna open up this power window for you. Now we want her whole face in range. So let's just widen this out, soften it down and try and get as much as her face in without hitting other areas. So let's say about there looks pretty good. Let's do some qualifying. So with our qualifier down here and our RG picker has already automatically come up, but if it hasn't for whatever reason, again, just come down to here and then just go down to your qualify here. So how do we target those skin tones? Well, we wanna make a point on our skin here. So let's pick a patch of a skin that we wanna change. So we'll say around about here, and that automatically makes a spot for you in our qualifier. Now, I don't like this method. I don't think it's fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is reset this. Then I'm gonna come down and take saturation off, and I'm gonna use my lumens here. I'm gonna bring it all the way up. Then I'm gonna press Shift H, so I can actually see what I'm hitting. Let's bring it up. Let's bring our highs down a little bit. Now let's soften it out like so. And we're still getting a lot of these dark areas. So let's bring this up just a little bit. Now, this is the problem with the qualifier. It is really quite fickle. So we can actually try and isolate those skin tones more by using our hue. And let's find the area that we want to get, of course, which is around here in our skin tones. And let's just make that a lot smaller in our range and then soften it out. And there's looking pretty good. And let's bring up that low just a little bit. And still we're getting this area here. So maybe we can move it across like so. Now we're getting a much better selection. And then we can see if we can get rid of this. So we'll come down to our mid-tones here. And just bring it across a little bit. And then maybe we can focus it in our shadows and our white clip. And again, this is very fickle when it comes to just hitting those skin tones. And this is my, well, this is one of my big issues I have with the qualifier, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. But for now, we'll just try and get as good as we can. We'll say that as close as we can get it for now. So let's press Shift H. Now we're back to our very looking magenta skin tones. Now, how do we know where skin tones are supposed to sit? Well, DaVinci Resolve has a fantastic feature in the scopes. So we make this bigger and we want to be in our vector scope here. So what we can do is first of all, click these little dot looking things here, which is settings, of course. And then you want to go down to show two times zoom. We can actually make this bigger. Let's make it easy on everybody. So again, settings up here. We can do this one, which is show two times zoom. So meaning that if we take this off, it's really small, but that is the actual saturation in our image here. But if we put this back on, we're just doubling in. So we're basically just zooming in onto this here. We want to go down to show skin tone indicator. So we have this line that pops up and that's telling us that that, sorry, that is the area that your skin tone should be sitting. 
Now at the moment, we can't actually see that. We actually have everything selected. So then how do we know where our skin tone is supposed to sit? We can easily go back and press Shift H again, which is our highlight mode. Now, if you don't know the shortcuts or you don't use the shortcuts for whatever reason, just come up to these three little dots here, highlight, and then come across to highlight. Now, what has happened here is the vector scope is only showing the areas which we have qualified because we're just highlighting those skin tones. So what we can do now is even though it looks like we're on the line, we are more pushing towards that red and magenta look. So with that offset here, we're just going to bring it across until we're sitting around about there. Now let's press Shift H and see what our image looks like. And we'll go full screen to get a better look at this. So this is our skin tones before we've made those adjustments. We've got a very looking magenta skin tones. We probably need to fix up these highlights, but that's okay for now. But again, yeah, this really red magenta look. And then if we put those adjustments on, we have a much better looking image when it comes to those skin tones, a more natural look when it comes to this person here. So that is one way to do skin tones, but it is problematic. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But first, let's go and do a better way, in my opinion, when it comes to adjusting skin tones. So what we can do, we can grab a still of this image by pressing Control, Alt, and G. Or you can come up to Color, come down to Stills, and then simply just click this for Grab Still. Okay, so in our gallery here, we have our node, and we'll just call this Quali. As always, spelled way incorrectly. Let's just reset this node because we don't need it anymore. Now again, we have that really magenta looking red skin tones, which looks terrible. But this time we're going to fix it using the color warper. So come down here next to your custom curves and click color warper. Now with that color warper, let's make it big. So click this button here and that's going to bring it up for us. Then in our color warper, hue versus saturation, we don't have many points here. Now, if we want a more refined selection, we want to add more points. So simply come down to here and you want to go down to, let's say 16, I think is a really good number for me. So here we have our skin tones here. Now, we know our skin tones are sitting around here. So let's just make a point on her skin here. So it's saying her skin tones are around about here. Now I'm going to go from the top. Instead of just going from the bottom, I want to get as much range as possible. But how do we know if our skin tones are sitting on that line when everything is still selected? When we used to qualify before, we could use the highlight mode and then that would show us only the parts of the skin that are selected. Well, there is a really nice little trick that you can do. So we'll just get rid of this stuff for now. What you can do is come down to your power window here, make a tiny little power window like so, and put it over her skin tones here. Then coming back to your vector scope here and bringing up your color warper here. So with our color warper and scopes eventually set out nicely here, what we can do again is press Shift H. And what that's gonna do is only show the areas of this power window that are being isolated. Meaning that this part of the skin is the only part that's gonna be showing in this vector scope here. So looking at this vector scope again, it's really pushing towards that red. So now what we can do is we can make a point using the RGB picker here. And again, that is gonna show us an area which the skin tone lives in. So we can just push this here until we're getting a better selection with our skin tones here. Now, if you go up with the color warper, you're adding in saturation. And if you go down with the color warper, you are desaturating that area of color. So we're looking okay if we go around about here. So what we're going to do is take this color warper off and then take this off. I'm going to press Shift H. If we zoom right in, we can see that area of skin that we've affected. And obviously we haven't affected everything else because that power window is isolating that area. So we can just turn this off. We can go full screen. Now we have skin tones sitting in a really nice area. And if we bring this up to our other skin tones, so let's go up to gallery here, then go up to our image wipe here, then double click this bad boy. So this is our skin tones when using the qualifier. 
And then this is our skin tones using the color whopper, which is a little desaturated, but are sitting in a really nice point. We could probably just easily push that saturation back in, which is why the color whopper is fantastic or another reason why it's fantastic. Now, this is our qualifier. Now let's talk about some problems with the qualifier and the reason why I don't particularly like it all that much. One of the big things is it tends to break your image really quickly because it's hard to get that clean qualification of really anything you're doing. Unless it's a solid color, you really will struggle trying to get that one color or that mixture of colors when you're trying to do that qualification. Even with that qualification here, her eyebrows have actually been affected by that qualification and even in her hair a little bit here and even in her eyes here, you don't have that perfect qualification. Now, of course, you could go back and you could do a power window. You can make a more precise selection when it comes to qualification, but you're not going to get that perfect qualification every single time. And sometimes you're really going to struggle when it comes to the background and let's say someone's skin tone. And the other really big thing with the qualify is it's really time consuming compared to the color warper. We spent a lot more time compared to the color warper, which is why the color warper to me is a much better tool when it comes to skin tone. If we go across to the qualifier, we did this skin tones so much faster than using the qualifier. And the other big benefit from using the color warper is we can actually desaturate certain colors or push more saturation into those colors. So not only can we balance someone's skin tone, we can add saturation or desaturate people's skin tone. And I think that is a fantastic, very handy tool and really simple to use tool when it comes to adjusting skin tones. So that is my video about skin tones. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to comment below anything you wanna see. Now, just one thing before we go today, I made a mistake in the last video and I just wanna clear it up. With our color space transform, Let's say it's here. We were working with Kodak LUTs last time and I said you needed to make a, another color space transform after your last color space transform and then the Kodak LUT here. You'd wanna make this one the Cineon Film Log one. So if we go to effects, color space transform and then you'd go to output gamma and then you would choose um, Cineon Film Log. But you don't actually have to do that. All you have to do is come down, we'll get rid of this garbage, come down to your last color space transform and in output gamma, you would just change it to Cineon Film Log. Then you could work with that Kodak Film LUT or any LUT that is going from Rec 709 to that Film LUT. So I just thought to clear that up. A couple of people did mention it in the comments and I do really actually appreciate it. Anytime I do slip up, I would really appreciate it if you guys could pick me up on that. Sometimes I'm rushing a little bit I don't have a lot of spare time on my hands, so any little mistake like that, more than happy to come back and correct it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure to comment below and thank you again for watching. I've been Drew, have a fantastic day and have a great weekend. Thanks again.